Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So here in this video, we will talk about the whole topics of magnetic effects of electric current and this chapter is there in class 10th science. Let us have some introduction for the chapter. Here the electricity and magnetism are linked to each other. This particular result we can show with the help of an experiment. So we can see here the experimental diagram have been shown. We are where we are connecting the wire that is the copper wire, the thick copper wire between the two points X and Y to the circuit. Here the wire is kept perpendicular to the plane of the paper. This is a plane of paper through which this copper wire is passing and nearby it I have kept a compass also. So here it is written that horizontally place a compass near the copper wire. On passing the current, when the current is passed from the battery or cell source, in between ammeter is connected in series, one resistance is also connected and the current is flowing from positive terminal of the battery towards the other battery, terminal of the battery and here K is a switch, switch is on. So when the current is passed through the copper wire, so the compass which is kept near to the copper wire, inside the compass we find compass needle which is getting deflected. It means that the experiment shows that when the electric current is passed through the copper wire, it produces the magnetic effect. And we find that the electric current carrying wire now behaving as a magnet or behave like a magnet. Some figure have been shown. This is the experiment which is shown here. Uh, in a simple way representation we can also perform we have a battery source two wires we have two wires one wire is connected to positive and one wire is connected to negative so as I connect the circuit is getting completed and here I have kept a compass near to the wire when I connect to the battery source the circuit is getting completed and I will find that the compass needle will show deflection it shows that Electric, electricity and magnetic or magnetism, electricity and magnetism are linked to each other. Here one scientist image have been shown. This name scientist will be Hans Christian Oristed who was born in 1820 and accidentally he discovered the deflection of compass needle in the presence of electric current. If we have to express that what is the unit of magnetic field strength it is oristed let us move towards the next important topic that we talk about here it is magnetic field lines and magnetic field a compass needle is a smaller bar magnet we can see here a small bar magnet is shown even the magnetic compass is having a needle that is a small bar magnet and it is ending with north and south direction that is having two poles north pole and south pole and it get deflected whenever brought near to the bar magnet here this is uh, at the end or terminal seek earth south pole so it will be a south pole of the magnet and it and sixth earth north pole so it is a north ending pole we have the previous knowledge that like poles ripple and unlike poles attract so if i bring the north pole of the magnet and the south pole of the another magnet towards each other i will see that it is an unlike poles so they will show attraction and here if i bring the north pole of one magnet and north pole of another magnet it will show repulsion so this is what it is written here and uh, by this first diagram we can see the end pointing north seeking north is north seeking pole and the other end pointing towards south 
it will be a south seeking pole we have magnetic field lines and field lines under this we have, we will be dealing with one experiment to obtain the magnetic field and magnetic field lines let us perform the experiment one so for this we need a white paper we have to fix it this white paper on a drawing board now place the bar magnet at the center you can see here the bar magnet which is colored red having two terminals north and south now we have to sprinkle the iron fillings uniformly over the bar magnet now we have to tap the board gently and we will find that the iron fillings will arrange or align itself along the field lines around the magnet what we observed that the magnet basically exerts an influence in its surrounding and so the iron fillings experience a force making the arrangement in such a pattern here what i find the area around the magnet this area around the magnet has a magnetic force which i call as magnetic field and the lines which the iron flings align themselves which represent magnetic field lines this is what we observe in this experiment one thing is that magnetic field is getting produced and these lines are represent magnetic field lines so this is the observation from this experiment now let us do and perform another experiment that is experiment 2 regarding the same topic magnetic field and magnetic field lines for this we have to place a magnet on a white paper fixed on a drawing board mark the boundary of the magnet so this is what the experiment is look like now we have to place a compass near the north pole of the magnet and south pole of the needle point towards the north pole of the magnet so means we need small magnetic compass in numbers this is what i have placed a bar magnet on the paper that is fixed on the board and if i place a magnet magnetic compass so north pole will point towards the south pole and south pole will be away from the south pole of the bar magnet now in this way i have to place number of magnetic compass and automatically the magnetic needle will specifically direct according to the uh, direction which is there so now move the needle in a position such that the south pole occupies the position previously occupied by its north pole and in this way it proceeds step by step till the reach the magnetic south pole so finally we will reach to the magnet uh main magnet that is a pole magnet and here i find the magnet needle is showing the direction south pole will be towards the north pole now join the points marked on the paper by a smooth curve and this curve curve represent the field line so this is what it is shown here so number of field lines around a bar magnet is shown the deflection of the compass needle increases as the needle is moved towards the pole so i find it uh the deflection of the compass will be increasing when the needle is moving towards the pole so this is what i find this is about magnetic field lines here uh, i find it the magnetic field i will say it is a quantity that has both uh, direction also and magnitude here the direction of the magnitude that, that is the direction of the magnetic field is taken in the direction in which the north pole of the compass needle moves thus the field lines merge emerge from the north pole and merged at the south pole and inside the magnet the direction of field lines is from south to north thus magnetic field lines are closed curve when i talk about the relative strength of magnetic field that is which shown by degree of closeness of the field lines how close the field lines are there it will indicate about the strength of magnetic field the magnetic field is stronger uh, i will say where the field lines are too crowded that is uh, where the greater greater force acting on the pole of the another magnet so where the field lines are too much crowded i will say magnetic field line is having greater strength degree of closeness indicate the relative strength of the magnetic field here two field lines do not cross each other this is also one of the characteristics point the two field lines are not crossing each other because compass needle cannot point towards two direction at a point of intersection so this is one of the 
important key point that two free lines are not getting interacted with each other no interaction can be seen because in the compass needle uh, that cannot point towards the now direction at the we point will of be dealing with another topic that is magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor here what i find we have to understand with the help of experiment that how the current carrying conductor is there and due to which how the magnetic field is getting produced so for this experiment we have to deal with the experiment so for this we need a long straight copper wire we need two or three cells of 1.5 volt we need a plug key and we have to connect these components in series now place the copper wire parallel to and over the compass needle so we can see the figure also so here a figure has been shown a compass needle and over the compass needle we have to place this copper wire now if the current flows from north to south direction if the current flows from north to south direction so the north pole of the compass needle move towards east so in this case if the current is flowing from north to south direction then i will see that the compass needle the north pole of the compass needle will move towards the east if the current flows from south to north direction if the current is flowing from south to north direction then the needle move in opposite direction that is towards the west so it means that direction of magnetic field produced by the electric current is also reversed so these two diagram have been shown if the current is flowing from north to south direction the north the, the north pole of this mag magnetic compass uh, will be moving towards east and if the current is flowing from south direction towards north direction the magnetic compass needle will be moving towards west and it shows that the direction of magnetic field uh, are produced by the electric current is also reversed now uh, let us have the experiment that is magnetic field due to current carrying state conductor so for this we have to understand this diagram how a cardboard wax box is uh, flat cardboard is taken and in between the cardboard we have to uh, uh, keep the copper wire and this copper wire is further connected to the com electrical components and the battery source and switch so insert a thick and straight copper wire to the center and to normal to the plane of a rectangular cardboard here we have to connect the copper wire vertically between the point x and y uh, in series and with a battery source of 12 volt and variable resistance that is rheostat ammeter of uh, 0 to 5 ampere and a plug key that is all connected in series now we have to sprinkle the iron flings uniformly on the cardboard so these these uh, sprinkles are getting arranged this are getting aligned and it is shown by this real image in the b figure now what will happen we have to close the key means we have to switch on the, the circuit so gently tap the cardboard we find it after few time the iron flings are getting arranged or in a concentric circle patterns and these concentric circle patterns represent magnetic field lines around the copper wire this is what i find here in this experiment that is magnetic field due to current carrying state conductor now with the continuation uh, we will see here uh, we have to place a magnetic compass now i have placed a magnetic compass here say this point p over the circle the direction of north pole of the compass needle gives the direction of field lines now what will be the direction of field lines uh, it will be indicated with the help of help of the north pole direction of the compass needle what i find here the direction of magnetic field lines is reverse what i find here the direction of magnetic field lines is reverse if the direction of current to the copper wire is reversed if the direction of current through the copper wire is getting reversed then the direction of magnetic field lines will also get reversed so if we vary the current in the copper wire the deflection of the needle also changes by this experiment we can conclude if the current is increased deflection will also increase thus the magnitude of magnetic field produced at a given point increases as the current through the wire increases so current uh, level will increase if it is in the circuit then the magnetic field produced 
will also getting increase at a given point that is the observation we find by this experiment here uh, we will also see that if a compass we are placing little far away let us at a further point say q we can see in the figure from the conducting wire so i will see that deflection in the needle is getting decreased and i will find that the magnetic field produced by the current in the conductor is also getting decreased uh, as the distance is increases so it is inversely proportional as the distance of the magnetic compass is there from the main copper wire through which the current is passing so uh, i will see that the deflection will be getting decreased so it is inversely proportional here so these concentric circles uh, which is representing magnetic fields around a current carrying straight wire becomes larger as we move away from it so these concentric circles uh, which are representing magnetic field basically around a current carrying wire conductor wire it becomes larger as we move away from it now let us uh, take the another important topic about right hand thumb rule we can see the figure also with the help of this figure we can imagine that what i want to say it is easy to find the direction of magnetic field associated with current carrying conductor that we have discussed in the experiment that if you want to find out what will be the direction of magnetic field uh, if it is associated with current carrying conductor that we have discussed in the previous talk now let us understand the right hand thumb rule so here we will see that we have to imagine a current carrying conductor straight conductor is held in a right hand thumb so i have taken my right hand and i'm holding a straight current carrying conductor the thumb basically points towards the direction of current this thumb is pointing the direction of current and then these fingers will wrap around the conductor these fingers are wrapping the conductor and these fingers are basically indicating the direction of magnetic field so this is called right hand thumb rule so this is called what right hand thumb rule these fingers are giving the direction of magnetic field the thumb is pointing towards the direction of current and this particular rule we call as right hand thumb rule and that is maxwell cork screw rule we have one question based on right hand thumb rule so let us see what they are saying a current through a horizontal power line flows in east to west direction so current is flowing from east to west direction what is the direction of magnetic field at a point directly below it and at a point directly above it so we have to indicate the magnetic field direction as per the given condition of current direction so if i apply the right hand thumb rule that is magnetic field at any point below or above the wire turns clockwise in a plane perpendicular to the wire when viewed from east end and anti clockwise when viewed from west end so it is it will be in clockwise direction when it is viewed from east and it will be in anti clockwise direction when it is viewed from west this is what i find here uh, for the answer that is from the right hand thumb rule now we have to understand the magnetic field due to current through a circular loop so for this we have to take a straight wire and we have to bend this wire to form a circular loop you can see in this figure these circular loops have been drawn and we have to pass the current through it here the concentric circles around every point of a circular loop becomes larger as the distance from the wire increases so as the distance is getting increased so circular loop the concentric circles around uh, every point of the circular loop becomes larger at the center of the circular loop you can see the center of the circular loop the arcs of these big circles appear to be as a straight line these are the arcs and as it comes at the center of the circular loop it almost become very straight this is what is indicated here every point on the wire give rise to the magnetic field so every point which is there in the magnet uh, in the wire is giving a magnetic field appearing as a straight line at the center of the loop so we have to apply the right hand thumb rule 
every section of the wire contributes to magnetic field lines in the same direction within the loop here what i find magnetic field produced by current carrying wire at a point depends directly on the passing through it so for a circular coil of with n tons the field produced will be n times as large as that produced by a single so, turn the current in each circular turn has the same direction and the field due to each turn just adds up so here uh, the uh, explanation has been there about the magnetic field lines which are produced by a current carrying circular loop now we have the experiment to understand we can see the experiment in more particular way that how the a circular coil which is carrying the current and around which the magnetic field is getting produced so we have taken this circular coil through a cardboard so through the cardboard we can find the how the magnetic field is getting produced so we have to take a rectangular cardboard having two holes we have to insert a copper circular coil having large number of turns through them and normal to the plane of the cardboard now we have to connect the ends of the coil in series with a battery and a key and rheostat this is a circuit now we have to sprinkle the iron flings uniformly on the cardboard plug the key and tap the cardboard gently few times we have to plug the key and then tap the cardboard so we can see the concentric circles patterns of iron flings get emerge on the cardboard at the center it appears as a straight line so when it comes at the center so i will see that it appears to be in a straight line that is what the observation is there from the experiment now we can have another one that is magnetic field due to current in a solenoid what is solenoid so solenoid is a coil uh, having circular turns of insulated copper wire wrapped around or wrapped closely in the shape of cylinder so this wire is it is especially the insulated copper wire is uh, wrapped closely in the shape of cylinder that is what a solenoid the pattern of the magnetic field lines around a current carrying solenoid this is a current carrying solenoid because it is connected to the switch connected to a battery source so it is a current carrying solenoid look similar to the pattern of the field around a magnet so as we find the magnetic field like patterns similarly here also we find magnetic field patterns can be seen one end of the solenoid behave as a magnet so one end of the magnet one end of the solenoid is behaving as a magnet magnetic north pole and other end is acting as a south pole the feed lines inside the solenoid are in the form of parallel straight lines so the, these are the feed lines which are inside the solenoid will be in a straight line and this indicate that magnetic field lines is same that is uniform at all points inside the solenoid here we have a magnetic material that we call a soft iron when it is placed inside a current carrying solenoid it becomes magnetized and the magnet so formed will be called as electromagnet or we can say temporary magnet now let us move further and understand that how the force on a current carrying conductor will be there in a magnetic field so the electric current through a conductor which is passing it produces a magnetic field and the field basically exert a force on a magnet placed near the conductor here one of the french scientists andre marie ampere that is from 1775 to 1836 suggested that the magnet also exert an equal and opposite force on the current carrying conductor this can be demonstrated with the help of an activity so we can this fix see this figure and accordingly we have to understand so you can see that how it is hang freely and we have to place a horseshoe magnet near it so the displacement of the rod that is rod ab suggests that uh, if you place the magnet in this way and the horseshoe magnet so and the current is passing through the uh, through the bar magnet which is hanging freely and we can see here a current carrying rod that is this one current carrying rod this is rod Uh, experience a force perpendicular to its length and magnetic field so here we find that displacement of the rod basically suggests that means the rod is showing movement 
here means the some force is exerted on a current carrying aluminum rod uh, when it is placed in a magnetic field and so direction of force is also getting reversed when the direction of current to the conductor is reversed this is what the observation i find in the experiment if the direction of current uh, direction of current is getting reversed uh, if the direction of current is getting reversed then the direction of force is also getting reversed continuation we will see that in the same experiment the change in direction in the field vertically downwards by interchanging the two poles of the magnet again the direction of force acting on the current carrying rod gets reversed it shows that the direction of the force on the conductor basically depends on the direction of current and the direction of magnetic field let us continue this experiment the displacement of the rod is largest that is the moment is largest and or the magnitude of force is highest when the direction of current is at the right angle to the direction of the magnetic field that is the observation which i observe we have direction of force can be found by framing left hand rule we have to stretch the thumb four finger and middle finger we can see in the diagram or left hand of the each other perpendicular to each other first finger will be direct showing the direction of magnetic field second figure direction of moment current and thumb basically pointing to the direction of motion or the force acting on the conductor this is what fleming left hand rule now we can see that your electric motor your electric generator loud speaker microphone measuring instruments are uh, the devices that uses current carrying conductor and magnetic field principles here we have one question that when electric electron enters the magnetic field at right angle to it shown below the direction of force acting on the electron will be towards which direction towards the right towards the left out of the page or into the page so we can see uh, this figure that the electron entered the magnetic field at right angle this is what the electron entering the magnetic field at right angle so the direction of force acting on the electron so which what will be the direction of force on the electron so the direction of force is perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field and the current is given as as fleming left hand rule so direction of current is taken opposite to the direction of motion of electron the force is therefore directed into the page uh we have one important topic that is magnetism in medicine your electric impulses carrying through the nerves can produce temporary magnetic field and these fields are very weak we have heart and brain that can produce significant magnetic field also we have a technique called mri so the magnetic field inside the body is used to obtain images of body parts and this technique we call as magnetic resonance imaging and this is helping the doctors uh, to diagnose different types of issues in the body mri so this is what we observe in this video we will continue further with the continuation let us move towards uh, another topic which is there in magnetic effects of electric current and uh, we are dealing with the same chapter that is for a class 10 science let us take another topic that we call as electric motor you can see here different type of appliances are shown these appliances are working on the electric motor and the principle will be involved here we can see here that a rotating device which is able to convert the electrical energy into mechanical energy that is what we see in these appliances we use electric motor in electric fan refrigerator a mixer washing machine computers and we can also use this type of machines in mp3 players let us understand its construction we he see here the north pole of magnet south pole of a magnet the split ring brushes axel and a and a circuit which is uh, get completed when it is connected to the uh, 
Now, electric motor basically consists of a rectangular coil A, B, C, D. This is what representing rectangular A, rectangular coil A, B, C, and D of insulated copper wire. Now, this thing is placed between two poles of a magnetic field such that the arm AB and arm CD are perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. So, these are perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field. The ends of the coil are connected to the two halves P and Q of a split rings. This is two halves of a split rings. Inner sides of halves are insulated. Inner side of halves are insulated both the side and they are attached with the XL. The external conducting edges of P and Q are touching the two conducting brushes that is X and Y. Now let us understand its working. So current from source that is battery source enters the coil A, B, uh, C, D through the brush X and Y through the bus X and it flows back to the battery through brush Y. So the current enters from the battery uh, through X and enter again or back again to the battery from Y. The current in arm AB that is A to B and arm CD that is C to D is in opposite direction. So the current here it is flowing from A to B and here the current is flowing from C to D. So both are having opposite direction flow of current. So applying left flaming left hand rule, we will see that a force acting on the arm AB, this is the arm AB, a force acting on arm AB pushes it down while the force acting on arm CD pushes it up. So a force which is acting on arm AB will push it, push it down and a force acting on arm CD will push it up. Thus the coil and the axle rotate anti-clockwise. So here the coil and axle will rotate in anti-clockwise direction. Now after half rotation, you will see that that's with the brush contacts with the brush X. So here we can see the Q contact with brush X after half rotation. And P comes in contact with brush Y and P uh, will come in contact with brush Y that is after half rotation. So we'll see that the current in the coil get reversed. Now here the direction of current in the coil will get reversed and flows along the path DCBA. Now the current will flow from DCBA. Here again current is flowing from D to C then B to A. It can be seen in the figure. A device that reverses the direction of flow of current through a circuit is called commutator. So here we have a figure which shows the commutator. This device basically reverses the direction of current, reverses the direction of flow of current. In electric motor, the split rings basically act as commutator. So as the direction of current is uh, reversed, so direction of force acting on the arms A and B will also get reversed. Thus, thus, thus the arm AB is pushed up now and the arm CD is pushed down. So we'll see this coil and the axle rotate half a ton more in the same direction. The reversing of the current is repeated in at each half rotation. So at each half rotation, the reversing of current will take place and it will be a repeated motion and the coil and the axle continuously rotate. So in this way, the coil and axle keep on rotating. So this is how the electric motor will work. Here this figure is showing where is the magnet, the starter, where is the rotator coil, where is commutator, the split rings, the where is shaft and where is brushes. So this is how the working of electric motor happens. Now let us what what is the commercial use of electric motor? The, elect, the electromagnet is the commercial motors are you use electromagnet in place of permanent magnet. Large number of turns of the conducting wire in the coil. A soft iron core means for 
manufacturing of electric motor or commercial motor what are the things we have using we are not using electromagnet we are using permanent magnet uh, more number of turns will be there for the of the conducting wire in the coil a soft iron core on which the coil is wound they together uh, are called armature armature it enhances the power of the motor so you can see here this is what the commercial motor look like here we can see the shaft here bearings is there uh, end bracket frame starter and commutator is there brush assembly is there so this is how uh, it look from inside now let us uh, take the another important topic that we call as electromagnetic induction so here we will see that when a conductor is moved inside a magnetic field we are having conductor and if this conductor is moved placed inside a magnetic field or a magnetic field is changed around a fixed conductor then it produces electric current here we have one of the import english ex scientist that is english experimental physicist whose name is michael faraday he is the first first person to study this in 1831 he discovered how a moving magnet can be used to generate electric current this effect can be observed by an activity so here this the image showing the michael faraday and uh, we have taken a copper coil a number of turns and i will be moving the magnet number of times so it will produce the current we are saying that with the help of this instrument so let us talk about michael faraday michael faraday have taken birth had taken birth in 191791 and he expired on 1867 had no formal education he developed his interest in science by reading books in book binding shop he worked he made notes of humphrey davy lectures and sent them to davy soon he became the assistant in davy's laboratory at royal institute faraday discovered electromagnetic induction and the law of electrolysis he turned down honorary degrees and conferred by the several universities a small introduction has been given about the physicist michael faraday now let us talk about the experiment what he has performed that is about electromagnetic induction so we can see the figure one we have galvanometer we have this is the instrument is galvanometer used to indicate whether the current deflection can be seen or not so here we are taking a coil of wire ab this is what uh, coil of wire ab you have taken having large number of turns here we have to connect the ends of the coil to a galvanometer like one type of instrument used to detect the presence of current in the circuit if you want to detect the presence of current in a circuit we are using uh, an instrument called galvanometer now move the north pole of a strong bar magnet we are taking strong bar magnet now move the north end of the north pole of the strong bar magnet towards the end b of the coil the galvanometer needle show deflection memory uh, momentary deflection to the right then the the galvanometer will show the momentary deflection towards the right and it indicate that the presence of current in the coil ap the deflection becomes zero when the motion of the magnet stops so when the when i stop the motion of magnet uh, the deflection will be so no deflection will be seen in the uh, galvanometer when when i stop the motion of the magnet that is the bar magnet through the coil ab now on moving the magnet away from the coil the galvanometer is deflected towards the left when i move the uh, magnet uh, little away from the coil i will see that the galvanometer deflection towards the left it means that the current is set up in opposite direction so it shows that that current set up is in opposite direction here this figure is also shown to indicate about the movement of galvanometer needle whether it is towards the right or whether it is towards the left now we have to place the uh, magnet stationary near the coil if i place the magnet very near to the coil at a stationary position and move the end b of the coil towards the north pole of the magnet what i see the magnetic needle deflect towards the right and similarly needle move towards left as the coiled coil is moved away 
when the coil is kept very stationary and the deflection of the galvanometer drops to zero if the south pole of the magnet is moved towards the end b the deflection of the galvanometer would be opposite to the previous case here when the coil and the magnet are stationary then there is no deflection in the galvanometer this activity basically shows that the motion of magnet with respect to the coil produces an induced potential difference which set up an induced electric current in the circuit so with the help of this activity we are trying to understand that how the magnet uh, motion uh, is is in connection with the uh, coil and how it is produces the induced potential difference basically set up setting up the induced electric current in the circuit we are having another experiment about electromagnetic induction i am now experiment using current carrying coil we are having two coils of copper wire having many tens say it would be 100 or 50 insert them over a non conducting cylindrical roll you can see in the figure connect the coil 1 that is primary coil that is large having large number of turns in series with a battery and a plug key and connect uh, coil 2 that is secondary coil with a galvanometer now we have to plug the key the galvanometer middle jump one side and quickly returns to zero and it indicate that momentary current is there in the coil 2 now disconnect the coil 1 from the battery you have to disconnect it down the coil from the battery the needle momentarily moves to the opposite direction opposite side it means that the current flows in opposite direction in the coil 2 so this is how we can have the understanding about this experiment initially when it is connected to the battery source and here the deflection is towards the uh, towards one side the deflection is towards one side in the coil 2 case where the galvanometer is connected but when the we are disconnecting the coil 1 from the battery the needle again showing the momentary Uh, deflection but it is in the opposite side so it shows that the current flows in opposite direction in the coil 2 so in the coil 2 the current is flowing in the opposite direction this is how we will have the understanding about this experiment so as soon as the current in the coil 1 reaches either a steady value or a zero the galvanometer in the coil show no deflection means when the current reaches to steady value or comes to zero in the coil 1 so galvanometer in the coil 2 will not show any deflection here thus we will say the potential difference is induced in the coil 2 so one type of potential difference is getting induced in coil 2 and when the electric current through the coil 1 is changing that is starting or stopping as the current in the first coil changes the magnetic field associated with also changes and it causes a change in the magnetic field around a secondary coil uh, around a secondary coil this is cause the this is the cause of induced electric current in the secondary coil so the process by which changing magnetic field in a conductor so one process is there which is changing the magnetic field in a conductor induces a current in another conductor this is what is called as electromagnetic induction let us uh, now let us see the uh, for the part so in the coil we will see that the current can be induced either by moving it in a magnetic field or by changing the magnetic field around it and it is convenient to move the coil in a magnetic field so this is how the process will work here the induced current is highest when the direction of motion of the coil is at a right angle to the magnetic field so we can understand this by your fleming right hand thumb rule right hand rule or fleming right hand rule so here we can see a fleming right hand rule figure is given here the direction of induced current the direction of induced current can be found by fleming right hand rule and you have to stretch the thumb then you have to stretch the four finger and your middle finger perpendicular right perpendicular to each other so here four finger indicate the direction of magnetic field this four finger represent the direction of magnetic field thumb represent the direction of motion of the conductor and your middle finger basically show the direction of induced current 
now let us uh, talk about the next important uh, working process for electric generator so how what is the principle of electric generator so here we will see that the principle of electromagnetic induction we will apply or can be applied to produce the large current for use of or use in home and industry and here in electric generator we will see that how the mechanical energy is working and it will use uh, to rotate the conductor uh, in a magnetic field to yield electricity so this figure is showing uh, these two strong powerful magnets and here the coil a b c d is connected and this is the rings ring r1 and r2 and b1 brushes b1 and b2 these are further connected to the uh, further connected to the galvanometer an electric generator consists of a rotating rectangular coil a b c d placed between two poles of permanent magnet north and south the two ends of the coil are connected to the ring r1 and r2 and their inner sides are insulated here we will see the two conducting stationary brushes b1 and b2 and are kept pressed on the rings r1 and r2 respectively r1 and r2 are internally connected or attached to the axle the axle may be mechanically rotated from outside to rotate the coil inside the magnetic field so outer ends of the brushes are further connected to the galvanometer when the axle attached to the two rings is rotated uh, that the arms ab move up and arm cd moves down in the magnetic field produces produced by the permanent magnet so here the coil ab cd rotated first clockwise so by applying fleming right hand rule you will see that induced current uh, set up in this arm along the direction of a b c d thus the induced current flows in the direction a b c d if the if there are large number of turns in the coil the current generator in each turn adds up to the give large current to the coil thus the current in the external circuit flows from uh, b2 to b1 after half rotation the arm c d start moving up and the arm a b moves down as a result the direction of induced current in both the arms changes and giving rise to net induced current in the direction dc ba the current in the external circuit now flows from b1 to b2 and thus after every half rotation we will see the polarity of the current in the respective arm changes such a current which changes that is reversing the direction after equal intervals of time is called alternating current that is ac current and this type of device we call as ac generator you can see the uh, interior area that is how the working process happens the rotation and the splittering this is the brush uh, connected to the load that is to the galvanometer uh, how the rotation will be taking place how the repetition of the circ uh, whole uh, process will be working here the current uh, which is always flows in one direction uh, then it is called direct current and the to get the dc a uh, split type a split ring type commutator is used this is in this one brush is at all times in contact with the arm moving up in the field uh, while the other ring is in contact with the arm moving down thus a unidirectional current is produced this device is called the dc generator here we have uh, most power stations constructed these days produces produces ac and in india we will see that ac changes direction after every 1 by 100 second that is having frequency of 50 hertz so we can see here excess of rotation in this figure uh, your commutator and carbon brushes your magnetic flux and uh, that is what advantage of ac over dc is shown that electric power can be transmitted over long distances without much loss of energy that's why alternating current is more having more advantages as compared to your dc current now let us talk about Uh, the next important topic about domestic electric circuit in homes you will see that electric power is supplied through main supply that is mains and supported through overhead electric poles or by underground cables in this we will see that one wire is with red insulation cover that is live wire or positive wire and other wire is with black insulation that is your neutral wire or uh, negative one and in our country we will see the potential difference between the two is 
between the two is 220 volts that is the potential difference and at meter board we'll see these wires pass into an electricity meter through main fuse and through the main switch they are connected to the line wire this wire supply electricity to separate circuit in the houses this is the electricity meter shown in the figure this is a schematic uh, diagram of common domestic circuit and this is how it is there so earth wire one is live wire one is neutral wire and uh, this is further connected to the electricity meter and here it is in distribution box is there and in the distribution box further it is connected to the uh, home appliances or switch ports often two separate circuits are used one is 15 ampere current uh, rating for appliances with higher power ratings uh, such as geyser air coolers and one is 5 ampere current rating for bulbs and fans the earth wire that is the green insulation is connected to the metal deep uh, in the earth near the house uh, this is safety measure for metallic appliances your electric press toaster table fan refrigerator the metallic body is connected to the earth where to provide low resistance conducting path for the current and it ensured that any leakage of the current uh, to the metallic body of the appliances keep its potential uh, to that of the earth and prevent severe electric shock or uh, this this figure is shown new wire color and old wire color this is how uh, nowadays a change is there and each uh, separate circuit will see that different appliances can be connected across the live wire and neutral wire each appliance has a separate switch and that is for on and off for the flow of current the appliance which is connected in parallel so that they are having the same potential differences and when the live wire and neutral wire comes in contact when the live wire and neutral wires comes in contact uh, it causes overloading and it causes uh, it occurs due to damage some insulation is there fault is there in the appliances and accidental leakage or accidental hike will be there in the voltage connection of many appliances in a single circuit it happens due to that and what are the effect will be there of overlapping we have seen and if there is a continuous overlapping loading the current in the circuit will abruptly increase and it causes short circuit here to prevent this we are using electric fuse and it prevent the damage of circuit and the appliances by stopping unduly high electric current the joule heating in the fuse melts it to break the electric circuit so we can see here the short circuit shown in the figure this is electric fuse type this is one type of fuse and this is also one type of fuse here we can see this wire uh, if this will broke the whole uh, current supply will be uh, broken the chain will be broken and further the appliances will be getting safe from the electric shock or from the electric short circuit so this is how we have come to the end for the chapter magnetic effect of electric current a short discussion we have done in this video